continuing in the process of building our website. In this lesson, we're going to set up this contact button up here at the top. So let's get started. Here we have our beginning HTML in the contact lesson folder and our beginning CSS. So we'll start by doing our save as file, save as, and we're going to save this as header.html and our CSS will save as main.css. So we're going to be working inside this header div container and we'll start with the div for the contact button. So we have div ID equals contact button. And we'll close that div. And inside of that, we will put the contact link a href equals and we have the mail to link. title equals contact us and it will say contact us. This is all very interesting because the way this is done, it's just a regular text link. And if we go look at this now in the browser, so when we drop this into the browser, you'll notice that it's just a regular link. It's got text, it's blue, and it's got the underline and that's what it looks like without the style. When we apply the style, it's going to look like this with the image. So the reason for that is that for browsers that are text-oriented browsers and don't have graphics and don't support CSS, they'll still see a link and they'll be able to click on it. When we do our style, we won't see it and it'll look all cool like it's supposed to look. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to put in the contact link. in the style sheet. We'll start by selecting the contact button div. And so we'll go ahead and save that. And now when we look at it, we'll see that that contact link gets moved over. And there it is. And that's where it's going to belong. Now we'll set it up so that it displays the image. These kinds of selectors are called pseudo element selectors. And what they are is they're special selectors that just select for an element in a particular state. And so these are special states for anchor elements. And so link and visited are the default states for a link that has or has not already been visited. And so this is its default state when it doesn't have a hover over it. And we'll set up the hover and active next. Those are the dimensions of the image. And this changes it from an inline element to a block element. And that text indent, that takes the text and moves it off to the left a thousand M's, which is way off to the left, so it'll never be seen. So just for browsers that support CSS, which is most visual browsers, that link will become invisible. Okay, let's talk about this background property at this point. You notice there's a URL and this is for the image and it says contact icon dual.gif. No repeat left top. So what we've done here is we've set this up so that it aligns at the left and top of the image. And so when I save this and we go look at it in the browser, you'll see the image will show up. And because our viewport window is just that size, it's the size of half of the graphic, but it's the full size of this image. We have aligned at the left top. All we see is that part of it. When I do the hover selector, you'll see that when you 
hover over it, it will show the other image. This is really clever, and we'll see what I mean here in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste here. Copy and paste, and then I can just change this to active and this to hover. So these are the two other states of the A element. So these are the pseudo element selectors for the hover state and the active state. And I'll just say background position is left bottom. So all that does is in that hover state is it changes this left top to be left bottom. So when I save that and we bring it up in the browser, reload, when I hover over this, you see that it changes the image. And looking at the image, that's the bottom half of the image. So we see the top half of the image in its normal state, and when I hover the mouse over it, we see the bottom half of the image. So that's just a clever way to make rollovers work using CSS.